The technological world has undergone remarkable changes over time, and it has outgrown the wildest of anyone's imagination. Even the futuristic weapons that were thought to be exist in movies only like jets that can fly on the edge of space at speeds faster than what seems possible are now a reality. One of these advanced aircrafts is SR-72 Dark Star, which was recently revealed by United States, and that has amazed the whole world. The most unique thing about this drone are its rare skills that make it a highly valuable asset in military technology. Join us as we dive deep into what makes the SR-72 Dark Star stand out and what it means for the US military. For a long time, the USAF has been on a quest to build a fighter jet which flies at extremely high altitude of over 880,000 feet at speed over Mach 3 without being detected. After a lot of struggles, they came up with the Son of Blackbird, known as the SR-72 Dark Star, that is being produced by Lockheed Martin to serve as the fastest drone for surveillance and intelligence operations. It was announced in 2013 as the successor to the famous SR-71 and is capable of carrying combat missions exceptionally due to its extraordinary speed, intelligence and technology. Lockheed Martin is assigned this job to develop SR-72 into a hypersonic superfast drone that is capable of long-range reconnaissance and surveillance missions and expects to conduct its first test flight around 2025 with official deployment in the late 2050s. As of now, the project has reached the design proposal phase. The SR-71 is the predecessor of the SR-72, which first flew in late 1965 and was inducted into service a few months later. Even though there were initial worries about mid-air refueling, it soon became an almost regular practice the SR-71 could sustain speeds above Mach 3.3 at altitudes of more than 16 miles, making it the world's fastest manned fighter jet. But it was withdrawn when satellite technology became popular for reconnaissance activities, which made the aircraft less valuable for Cold War operations. The SR-72 is said to have the ability to travel at speeds that are six times faster than sound, and this makes it an airplane that is very fast. The SR-72 has been in development since 2016 under the partnership of Aerojet Rocketdyne and Lockheed Martin. Together, they are trying to develop a specific engine that will allow it to attain extreme speeds without any issue. The engine design uses a turbine-based combined cycle, which combines a low-speed turbine engine and a high-speed scramjet engine, both with the same engine displacement and nozzle but with different air paths. To withstand extreme thermal impacts at speeds over Mach 5, the SR-72 is manufactured from advanced composite materials such as carbon, ceramic, steel, etc. These materials are necessary to prevent the jet from being blocked as the metal parts melt due to the intense heat generated over time. The SR-72 is designed to perform intelligence surveillance, reconnaissance and strike missions, but its practical specifications have yet to be discovered because the existing weapons may not be suitable for its very rapidly growing capabilities. This challenge requires the development of new sensors and weapons that match the unique capabilities that the SR-72 aims to achieve. The newly designed weapon, which will match the speed and altitude of the SR-72, should match the capabilities of spy attack aircraft. The goal of the 2013 program is to build a smaller SR-72 for pilots or autonomous aircraft, about 60 feet long, similar to the F-22 Raptor. The goal was to have a full-size engine that is capable of supporting speeds up to Mach 6. The SR-72 demonstrator test coincided with the introduction of a new powerful weapon called the High-Speed Strike Weapon, and it makes sure that both projects stay on the track. The SR-72, just like its predecessor, could be more than 100 feet long and have a same range. According to USAF policy, this aircraft will be ready for missions in 2030. Lockheed Martin alone couldn't afford the project and applied for government funding, which hasn't been funded yet. General Mark Welsh said the SR-72's high-speed capability could reduce enemy reaction times during critical Air Force operations. Despite the Air Force's interest in the SR-72, it is decided not to fund due to the Northrop Grumman RQ-1-180, which it believed was stealthier and less costly for reconnaissance missions. In 2014, NASA gave funding to Lockheed Martin to investigate the feasibility of a superfast engine for SR-72. 
This supported research on combining a standard turbine engine with a special low-speed ramjet called a dual-mode ramjet. Aerojet Rocketdyne is also involved and could help run a demonstration to test two-way ramjets in real flight conditions. Lockheed Martin, which won a NASA contract in December 2014, set out to develop advanced technology for its SR-72 aircraft. In March 2016, the head of Lockheed Martin in Houston said they were close to a major breakthrough. This development would enable a smaller SR-72 experimental version about the size of an F-22 stealth fighter for less than $1 billion. This development excited them because it brought them closer to seeing the SR-72, which could fly max 6 speeds. In January 2018, Lockheed Martin leader Jack On attributed their growth to advances in 3D printing and computer modeling. He explained that this development would not have been possible just five years ago. The cooling system can also be integrated directly into the engine through 3D printing to improve overall performance. Orlando Carvalho, head of fighter jets at Lockheed Martin, clarified that the SR-72 is not yet in production, contrary to rumors. Their focus was on research on supersonic technology, which is necessary to develop advanced weapons. Once the technology matures, Cavallo pointed out, it could lead to formation of reusable vehicles. Since there is so little information on the SR-72, let's examine its predecessor, the SR-71 Blackbird. Lockheed Corporation developed this high-speed and high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft. Its first flight took place on December 22, 1964, and official service began in January 1966. It was retired in 1998 from the United States Air Force and in 1999 by NASA. The SR-71 is an improvement over the Lockheed A-12. Larger and heavier than the A-12, it provided higher fuel capacity and a second cockpit seat. Despite its original purpose as a bomber, it was modified to suit reconnaissance. The SR-71 had started in private, served in the Air Force, returned briefly, and then worked for NASA before retiring. The SR-71 Blackbird was equipped with special equipment for its spy missions, including sensors to intercept signals, radar to observe ground targets, and a camera. It has the ability to fly over speed Mark 3.2 and altitudes up to 85,000 feet, making it difficult for the enemy to intercept or attack. If it detected a missile, it could quickly accelerate and evade it. However, it required extensive inspection and maintenance after each mission, and flights averaged about once a week. Despite its capabilities, 12 of the 30 SR-71s built were involved in accidents, but none were lost in combat. After the SR-71 was retired, other technologies, such as spy satellites and unmanned aerial vehicles, took over its reconnaissance role. It was the second stealth aircraft after the Lockheed A-12. It included features to reduce radar invisibility, such as chines and inward canted control surfaces, special radar absorbers, and additives added to its fuel to keep the exhaust visibility. However, the Russian radar technology developed faster than stealth technology. The structure of the SR-71 was primarily titanium, with a polymer composite material for cost management. Lockheed used titanium alloys, which are easy to work with and brittle at low temperatures, leading to new fabrication methods now used in aircraft manufacturing. Challenges include distilled water treatment to wash welded titanium to prevent tap water chlorine corrosion and to avoid cadmium-plated tools to prevent metal contamination. Originally, the SR-71 lacked chines and sharp edges on the fuselage, but the CIA and advisory panel favored the design of the SR-71 over A3 based on radar reflection. Lockheed added chines to its A4 with the A6 design. The SR-71 Blackbird was powered by two Pratt Whitney J-58 turbojet engines, also known as the JT-11D-20. These engines were new and capable of 32,000 pounds of static thrust. The engines performed well while flying around its typical speed of Mach 3.2. During takeoff, 26% of the power came from the afterburners, which went increasing with increasing speed up to about Mach 3. The afterburner provided all the thrust. Flying over 85,000 feet meant that the crew could not use conventional masks as sufficient oxygen was not available above 43,000 feet. In the event of an emergency departure at Mark 3.2, the crew was exposed to high temperatures, so the onboard oxygen kept the suit stable during landing. 
In flight, the fuselage could be pressurized to 10,000 or 26,000 feet. Heavy-duty cooling systems were needed to handle the intense heat from sailing at Mach 3.2. A heat exchanger was used to cool the cockpit by transferring heat to the fuel before it was combusted by the air conditioner. The same system cooled the front landing gear, eliminating the need for special aluminum-insulated tires like those used on the main landing gear. A successor to the SR-71, rumored since 2007, is said to be less elusive, capable of reaching Mach 6 or higher, and difficult to intercept if detected. Some experts have suggested it might operate as a bomber with some modifications, but this will cause serious problems. Accurately aiming at Mach 6 speeds after a rocket launch is nearly impossible, thus requiring extremely powerful guidance computers and extensive maneuvering capabilities. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and watch the next video as well. See you again.